In this video, we're going to go through just one more application of the pigeonhole principle, and it is an application in a proof. So as I said in the last video, I'm not going to prove the pigeonhole principle. There are two proofs in your textbook, one for the generalized pigeonhole principle and one for just the pigeonhole principle. So I don't feel the need to go through that proof. It's fairly straightforward. I do want to take you through a proof that is not one of the examples in your textbook that actually uses the pigeonhole principle. So for this example, for this one proof we're going to go through together, um, I've actually just recopied the same proof twice because I want to spend some time talking to you about all of the parts of this first before we jump into a proof. So the first thing is, do we understand how to read math? So this says, let x i, y i, z i for one is less than or equal to i is less than or equal to nine be a set of nine distinct points with integer coordinates in x, y, z space. So sadly, there are quite a few of my students who would probably read that first sentence and say, yep, I'm out. I don't know what she's asking me to do, so I'm just moving on. Well, let's just not let that be you. So what is this saying? It's saying we have three ordered triples, x, i, y, i, z, i. This is just a numbering system. It's saying that there's nine distinct points. So for instance, let's say I had a point zero, 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 and I had a point one, negative two, three, and two, four, six, you get the idea. I have nine distinct points. So none of the points are the same. This is just the first X, the first Y, the first Z. This is the second X, the second Y, the second Z. That's all this guy is saying. Now again, we have nine distinct points. That's why it goes from one to nine and their integer coordinates on XYZ space. So again, they might have written it like that, or they might have said where X, I, Y, I, Z, I are integers. We want to prove that the midpoint of at least one pair of these points has integer coordinates. So we've talked about what all of this mess means. And now we need to talk about what does it mean to be a midpoint? So hopefully again, you recall what it means to be a midpoint, but if you don't, let's just remind ourselves, how do we find the midpoint of an ordered pair or in this case, an ordered triple? To find the midpoint, we need to take the X values of the two points and average them and the Y values of the two points and average them and the Z values of the two points and average them. That's how we find a midpoint. So for instance, if I were using these first two points that I made up, my midpoint would be zero plus one divided by two, zero plus negative two divided by two, and zero plus three divided by two, which would give me one half, negative one, and three halves. The last part of this says we want the midpoint of at least one pair of these points to have integer coordinates. So this example that I just did with you, not integer coordinates. So really I need it to be a member of z comma z comma z, which it's not. So how do I ensure that when I add two things together and divide by two, that the result is in fact an integer? Well, let's think about number theory. In number theory, which we studied some in discrete math one, so I'm going to assume that you are joining us from discrete math one, we showed that Let's, and I, I'm not going to do a proof for any of these. We did these in discrete math one, so just take my word for it. We found that if you take an even integer and an even integer, for example, two plus six, that that value is going to be even. And if I take an odd integer, 
plus an odd integer, for example, 3 plus 9, that that result is going to be even. But if I take an even plus an odd, like 2 plus 3, that solution is going to be odd. And that's in either order. So what do I need? Well, because I'm dividing by 2, I need my numerator to be even, which means I need the two values, x1 and x2, and y1 and y2, and z1 and z2, to either both be even or both be odd. So the mathy way to say this is that I need integers of the same parity. Parity talks about whether or not an integer is even or odd. So I haven't done the proof at all yet. All I have done is talk about what I need in order to successfully do this proof. So now we are going to essentially wipe our slate clean and go ahead and do this proof together. So now that we know how we are going to go about this proof, let's go ahead and prove it. So again, as we're working with the proof, it's a really good idea to structure your proof in a way where you're going to have a given, a what to prove, and a proof. I um, encourage my students to do that just because it really helps us to know what is the information given to us? What's the premise? What are we trying to start with? Then the what to prove says exactly how we're going to prove it based on our given and then our actual proof itself. And then the very last part, of course, will be our conclusion, which really should match the what to prove. So in this case, I'm trying to prove that the midpoint of at least one pair of these nine points has integer coordinates. So for our given, we talked about the fact that it's really just that first sentence. We have an ordered triple. And we have actually nine of them. So for one is less than or equal to i is less than or equal to nine. And they are distinct integer coordinates. And what I'm trying to prove, I can either write what I wrote in red at the bottom, that at least one pair of nine distinct ordered triples must have integer midpoints. Or I went ahead and wrote how I was going to look at it in terms of finding the actual midpoint. So if you're unfamiliar with any of this, um, terminology or notation. Again, we're just taking x sub j plus x sub k, where j and k are between 1 and 9. So notice I didn't use i because i is just sort of the counting procedure. So I'm basically using j and k and saying these two values are between 1 and 9, and I'm taking the x values and the y values from each. I'm averaging them. So again, I'm basically saying I'm taking two points from this set and I'm going to um, find the midpoint. And I want them to be in the Cartesian product z cross z cross z, which just means the first integer or the first value is an integer, the second is an integer, and the third is an integer. So again, if that's confusing to you, you can write exactly what we have here. I just went ahead and wrote it out. Uh, particularly because it has that formula for the midpoint in the what to prove. Now for the proof, again, you cannot assume that whoever is reading your proof knows what we just talked about on the last slide. So as I'm starting my proof, and the reason that I'm just showing you the proof as opposed to say writing it out as we go is because I will make a mistake a hundred times and take a hundred takes of this video and I don't want to do that. So I went ahead and wrote it out, but again, I'm just kind of saying what we did on the last slide. From number theory, we know that the sum of two integers of the same parity is an even integer. Since by definition of an even integer, we know that dividing an even integer by two results in an integer, we can prove the midpoint of two coordinates is an integer coordinate by proving two sets of coordinates have the same parity. So again, we're looking for two integer coordinates that have the same parity. And what I'm talking about here, what I'm talking about the parity is I'm talking about say even, 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 and another one that's even, 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 or two that have even, odd, even, or two that have odd, odd, odd. We get the idea. We need them to have the same parity. 
So from the product rule, there are two to the third possible parities. So how do I know that? Well, because the first value can be even or odd, so that's two options. The second value can be even or odd, which is two options. And the third value is even or odd, which is two options. So I have two times two times two, or two to the third, which is eight parities. Now, what are those parities? Again, I could have even, even, even. I could have odd, odd, odd. Oops, <laughs> I actually spelled the word odd. Odd, odd, odd. I could have even, odd, even. You get the idea, there's eight of them. I'm not going to list them all out. Um, but again, there are eight. So from the pigeonhole principle, since we have nine given points and only, which is the K, and only eight boxes, um, then we must have two coordinates that have the same parity. So we have nine pigeons in only eight boxes. Therefore, we know by the pigeonhole principle that two coordinates must have the same parity. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at permutations, and we have studied permutations in Discrete Math 1. We're going to review that information, so what we already know about permutations, and then we're going to obviously do um, some practice that takes our knowledge a little bit further.